Have you guys ever been in that situation where you say something completely ridiculous to one of your friends, they don't realize it's a joke, and then go and do it anyway? Well, I feel like this is one of those cases. I've been saying jokingly for quite a while that Sousa and Oracle should partner up to fight Red Hat, especially after Oracle put out that blog post saying, basically, we are the good guys now. But I didn't think they would actually go and do so. However, there is one group I didn't account for. This is the Open Enterprise Linux Association, or Open ELA for short, a trade association between Oracle, SUSE, and CIQ. Who is CIQ, you might ask? They are the company backing Rocky Linux. There is one obvious party missing here. I don't mean Red Hat, I mean Cloud Linux, the company backing Alma Linux. My assumption for why they're missing is because Alma Linux is backing away from one-to-one -one compatibility and sort of doing their own thing. Maybe they'll get involved in the future, but at least for now, this is the group we have. Simple question, who is Open ELA? Open ELA is a collaboration created and upheld by CIQ, Oracle, and SUSE. Open source and community is the DNA of Open ELA. You know that some PR guy wrote this, thought it was the funniest thing they've ever written, and laughed about it for like 10, 15 minutes. And we've hard coded the virtues and principles within our core tenets, policies, and bylaws. We enthusiastically encourage the broader community to participate and welcome all contributors, and here's the jab at Red Hat, and freeloaders, any and all individuals, corporations, and other entities that share open source values are appreciated and celebrated at Open ELA. If you couldn't tell this entire organization is just a giant attack on Red Hat, this line should make it pretty obvious. Now, both Oracle and SUSE have released press releases on this. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same press release. I think there might be some slight differences, but the main body of it is the exact same content. I'll leave them linked in the description down below though, so if you want to check them out for yourself, please go and do so. As for CIQ alongside Rocky, CIQ hasn't released something at least to the best of my knowledge, but Rocky Linux did comment about it over on Twitter. I will get into this tweet later though, alongside Rocky's general stance, because Rocky and CIQ are not the same organization, and there are some really important things to say here. But this whole organization explains something very simple. Where in the world that SUSE project, the clone of Red Hat, is going to be managed? Because they said it was going to be in some sort of non-profit, but they never said what that was going to be. Open ELA is in progress of becoming a Delaware 501c6 US non-profit entity and will be subject to the board of directors comprising both corporate and community members. The initial board of directors will include equal representation for our founding entities, CIQ, Oracle, and SUSE. This breakdown is obviously to ensure that none of the companies, at least initially, have a larger sway on the non-profit. Because while it is a separate entity from Oracle, if they did it based on how big the companies were, obviously Oracle would have the largest voting majority. Then they could do basically whatever they wanted and vote in favor of things that would obviously benefit Oracle, that would obviously benefit Oracle over some of the other parties involved. Maybe not directly harming them, but shifting more towards their financial interests. There's no perfect way to do a voting system, but having equal share among the three companies is probably the best way they could have approached it. Just having Oracle involved is going to annoy some people, but if they're going to be there, equal weighting is probably the best thing. I'm very curious to see what it looks like in six months, a year, two years, five years down the line after old members leave, new members are voted in, if it's going to remain equally balanced in this way, or start shifting towards one company and they end up having more control. I really hope that doesn't happen, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Also, it's really unclear what the community representation is going to be like. They obviously say they want to have community members on the board of directors, but is this going to be an equal number alongside the corporate entities? Is it not going to be forced in this way? Is it going to be whatever naturally happens? It's really unclear right now at least. Obviously, the parties involved are only going to have positive things to say. Regardless, let's see some quotes from them. So, from SUSE, 
Collaboration is critical in fostering innovation, which is why we welcome everyone to be part of this association and help us uphold open community standards. SUSE is a strong believer in making choice happen together with the open source community. We will redefine what it truly means to be open and deliver a stronger future for EL or Enterprise Linux. From CRQ, today's announcement marks the beginning of a new era for EL. With OpenELA, CIQ, Oracle, and SUSE join forces with the open source community to help ensure a stable and resilient future for both upstream and downstream communities to leverage Enterprise Linux. And from Oracle, Many large organizations reached out to express the importance of community-driven source code for EL that can act as a starting point for compatible distributions. OpenELA is a response to this need, and it represents a commitment to helping the open source community continue to develop compatible EL distributions. Now, assuming their mission statement is followed, which I really hope it is, this could possibly be incredible to establish and make accessible the sources, tooling, and assets to all members, collaborators, and the open source enterprise Linux distribution developers, which basically just means everybody, to create and maintain one-to-one -one downstream derivatives of enterprise Linux. The way this will be done is with these deliverables. All sources necessary to achieve one-to-one -one bug for bug compatible version of Enterprise Linux will be distributed via Git encouraging community collaboration. There should be a comma right there. Security errata data, basically saying if there is a security problem, all the details explaining that problem. Compatibility guidelines for downstream distributions to test their build tests. So if you want it to actually be one-to-one -one compatible, they will tell you the guidelines you need to meet to actually be able to do that a branding kit for all downstream distributions and supporters, and user and administrative documentation, which is apparently an Oracle contribution. I don't know why that needs to be specified, but I guess it is. But they're not just going for the bare minimum support, you know, compatibility with Red Hat 9. No, no, no. What they're doing is starting later this year, OpenELA will provide sources necessary for RHEL compatible distributions to exist with initial focus on RHEL EL8, EL9, and possibly EL7. If they go back that far, that is going to be insane. Like, most people should be in the process of upgrading, you know, up to EL8. But if they can do that, and then maintain three versions at the same time, that's going to be incredible. The project is committed to ensuring the continued availability of open ELA sources to the community indefinitely. One thing you might think I failed to mention is if they're making this source code available, wouldn't they also have an ELA distribution? Well, that's the thing. They're not doing that. Their goal is to be a neutral entity just providing the source code. So if Oracle wants to use it, CIQ, SUSE, somebody else, like Alma Linux wants to come in, somebody else wants to make their own distribution for the enterprise Linux space, someone wants to base it off of this, and then want to build something entirely new, all of that is going to be completely available. And I think it's for the best that they don't make a distribution. This could very easily turn into a conflict of interest, especially if one of the major companies got majority control of the organization. Say Oracle got control and they had a distribution, then all of a sudden, you could have a centuist situation again. Which I don't know about you, but I feel like would completely defeat the point. Maybe have a reference implementation, but do not try to market it as something that's trying to take over the enterprise Linux space. Now, I think we're done with the first point because that's what that one was. Let's go to the second point. To allow and encourage contributions and enhancements from the upstream community in the form of extras. So their goal is to be one-to-one -one compatible with what Red Hat is doing. But you obviously want to have the ability to add in extra things. The technical details here aren't entirely clear, but I would imagine it'd be similar to something like an EPL or other sort of third-party package repos, where if somebody needs that extra functionality, then they can go and download that extra package. The last two are very hand-wavy and hard to define. To always act in the best interest of the open source community and all downstream derivatives. Be good. Don't be bad. To create an inclusive community of organizations and individuals to ensure longevity, stability, and management of this project. Be good. Don't be bad. 
<laughs> That's pretty much what's being said there. We're gonna have to wait and see how it operates in the real world to really see what that's going to mean. Along with this, there are seven founding principles. Open source software. Open ELA commits to making all the sources available unencumbered to the public, allowing anyone to view, modify, and utilize it in accordance with the upstream source licenses. So there's not going to be an extra login, for example, to be able to see the source code. Now, when they say that everything's going to be available on Git, they don't specify where that's going to be, whether it's going to be their own random Git server that's just linked on this website, if it's going to be a public GitLab, if it's going to be GitHub, if it's going to be the main GitLab, none of that is really specified yet. We're gonna have to wait and see exactly where it's being stored, but at least we know it's gonna be available to the public. Independence and neutrality. OpenELA is an independent and neutral entity, providing a level playing field for all contributors and avoiding conflicts of interest. This is why all of the companies right now are balanced, and this is going to be the hardest one to really keep going in the long run. There are so many cases of different entities getting majority control of a non-profit and then taking it in a really unpopular direction. So we'll have to see if this actually plays out in the real world. Transparency. OpenELA is transparent in all operations, finances, decision-making processes, and development. This, I think, is going to be a difficult one to provide in a way that is actually usable, because a lot of projects are really open, but when all your communication is being done on a mailing list, for example, it's kind of a barrier to entry to really see what's going on. So I think they'll need to really pay attention to how they're putting the information out there to make sure people can actually use it. Collaboration. All members and users will work together, share knowledge, and collaborate on shared infrastructure and resources, which likely means some shared Git repo, shared communication platforms, things like that. Everyone is welcome to take an active role, participate, and contribute. Contributions and involvement in the community may determine one's influence and responsibilities. So if you're an active contributor, for example, you are constantly replying to issues, you are constantly reporting bugs and things like that, maybe you'll be asked to be in some sort of leadership role. This is very common stuff on every project out there. This is how a lot of the people that are in leadership roles on projects like Fedora, on Ubuntu, and things like that, that's how they got involved. They were there right from the ground floor, just helping people out. Someone got in contact with them and said, hey, do you want to do this in a more official capacity? And now they are. Obviously not everyone. Some people just applied for a job, but there are absolutely big cases. So security, maintaining and exceeding the highest levels of security is essential. Processes for tracking and staying up to date with security bug fixes, errata, and vulnerabilities will be set to ensure the source repositories are up to date resulting in a more resilient and secure software ecosystem while continuing to benefit from the advantages of collaborative development and transparency. Make sure the thing you are putting out is actually addressing bug fixes and is actually secure. Because if it's not, why would anybody want to build off of what you're making? SUS, Tainability. OpenELA is committed to providing long-term sustainability for all hosted projects, ensuring resilience and viability for the foreseeable future. They want to make sure the project just keeps going. And lastly, community governance, which we mostly talked about already. OpenELA will establish a transparent and inclusive community with representation from contributors and stakeholders to have a say in the decision-making process and project direction. All of this stuff sounds great on paper, but it's a matter of whether they can actually do it. Whether they can actually deliver the product in the time frame they say they can, and then continue to support it long and consistently into the future. Because it's one thing to do a singular release. It's one thing to do two releases. It's one thing to maybe support it for a year or so. But when we are talking about the enterprise space, we are talking about systems that some will deploy and then keep that same version. This is why people are still using Enterprise Linux 7 for 10 years into the future. This is while still expecting things like security fixes. But it's not like any of the companies here are new to the idea of Enterprise Linux. They've been doing this for a very, very long time. They have a lot of resources. And if anybody was going to make this happen, it would be these massive organizations. With all this going on, you're probably wondering what Red Hat thinks because they're not just gonna lie over and give up. 
Mike McGrath of Red Hat has this to say. In our view, Enterprise Linux isn't an implementation standard. It goes beyond the bits to encompass the expertise, support, and engineering that backs an operating system. This is what makes Red Hat Enterprise Linux an enterprise-level Linux product. We're proud to employ many of the talented minds driving innovation across not just Linux, but open source in general, advancing upstream projects and enterprise applications in tandem. We have always welcomed ongoing contributions to the broader Linux community, whether personally motivated or from companies like Oracle and SUSE, that actually move enterprise level Linux forward rather than replacing one logo with another. So, that's pretty much a lot of nothing. It's we at Red Hat are going to keep doing the Red Hat thing. And that's about it. Maybe when they actually have the source code available, they will have something different to say. What's really intriguing to me are the statements made by Rocky Linux. Congrats to the coalition spearheading the development of Open ELA. The Rocky Linux project currently has a working process. However, we believe in community accessible source of Enterprise Linux. Whatever comes next, the future of Enterprise Linux looks bright. That's probably not saying that much. But over on Reddit, a member of Release Engineering had this to say. The entire OpenELA thing is a joint effort from three other companies, where we, the RESF, weren't involved. They all want a single place that all Enterprise Linux derivatives can go and be involved in obtaining sources. With that said, the RESF nor the Rocky Linux project within did not participate nor have any involvement in ELA's creation. We also have no plans as of now to work with or be part of it. This is the RESF, the home for open source enterprise software. As you can see, they are backed by CIQ. So, this is another open source enterprise organization. This is the organization that is directly developing Rocky Linux. I don't know what Rocky Linux involvement is going to be with OpenELA, or if there's any whatsoever, whether CIQ uses it for their other products, or what's actually going to go on. When I first heard about this, I assumed that Rocky Linux was just all on board, but I'm very interested to see how this all plays out. But what do you think? Do you think this is all just a giant waste of effort and everybody should just give up on the Enterprise Linux space and go and use Debian? Do you think everybody's perfectly fine on Red Hat? Or do you think all of these Enterprise Linux systems should just be doing their own thing and not having some sort of non-profit managing things? I would love to know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, go and like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one over, these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear paid link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and the Enterprise Linux space is actually exciting right now.